Welcome to the video on the quotient rule. In this video we're going to learn about what the quotient rule is, when we use it, and then just do some practice problems using the quotient rule. So when we see this word quotient, that's just a fancy way of saying two functions are being divided. So we've got one function here, 3x minus 2, this is like our f of x, and a second function, 2 minus x squared, this is like our g of x, and we're dividing these two functions. So h of x is the division, the quotient of two functions. So if you remember from the product rule, if we were taking the derivative of two functions that were multiplied, <clears throat> this did not equal f prime times g prime. So hopefully you think, okay, well, if that wasn't the case, then it's probably definitely not the case that you can just take the derivative of the top divided by the derivative of the bottom. So this is not true. You can't just take the derivative of the numerator divided by the derivative of the denominator. So let's look at what the actual quotient rule is. So the quotient rule tells us, here it is, it tells us that when we have one function divided by another function, we take the derivative of the numerator times the denominator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Notice that there's a subtraction symbol here, so it's really important which function you take the derivative of first, and the way I remember it is you take the derivative of the top function, the numerator function, first. Okay, and then this is all divided by the denominator squared. Now when we learn the chain rule, you'll be able to see why this um, we have this somewhat um, complicated rule for our quotient rule. But for now, let's just um, practice using it. So my <coughs> function f of x is going to be my 3x minus 2. And the g of x in our formula is going to be the 2 minus x squared. So if it helps you, off on the side here, you can over here put, okay, well the derivative of f of x is going to be the derivative of 3x minus 2, so that's 3, and the derivative of my g of x is the derivative of 2 minus x squared, and that is going to be negative 2x. Now watch out, because that negative sign is the thing that gets missed frequently. Okay, so our derivative, h prime of x, is going to equal, we take, put our derivative of our f prime, or derivative of f, which is f prime, first, so we have 3, and we're going to multiply that by our g, so I have 2 minus x squared, and then I'm going to subtract, here I have my f, so that's going to be 3x minus 2 times the derivative of my g. So the derivative of my g is negative 2x, and this is all divided by our g squared. So we're going to have 2 minus x squared squared. Okay, so you could simplify this pretty easily. It's not too bad. Let's go ahead and do it just for fun. But your um, answer could be this answer right here. I'm perfectly happy with this. But let's go ahead and multiply this out. So we get 6 minus 3x squared. Let's see, here I have a minus and a minus, so that's going to be a plus. 2x times 3x is 6x squared, and then um, this is going to be minus 4x, because I've got three negatives for that one, all over, and I'm going to leave this as 2 minus x squared squared. I'm not going to multiply that out. Collect like terms, I'm going to have 3x squared minus 4x plus 6 over 2 minus x squared squared. Let's look at another example. Okay, so this time our function has some square roots in it. And another thing 
that um, we have going on here is our function name is g of x. So don't let that confuse or get you all confused. We're still going to think of our numerator as our f of x. So this is f of x. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to rewrite that as x to the 1 half plus 1. And while I'm at it, let's go ahead and find the derivative of that f. So that's going to be 1 half x to the minus 1 half. And then my g for my quotient rule formula is x to the 1 half minus 1. So g prime of x is going to be the same thing as f prime of x. So I have 1 half x to the minus 1 half. OK, so let's just start plugging this in. So our g prime of x, we're going to open a big fraction bar here. And I'm going to have my derivative of my f first. So that's going to be 1 half x to the minus 1 half. And I'm going to multiply that by my g. So that's x to the 1 half minus 1. Subtract. This time I just have plain old f, x to the 1 half plus 1, times the derivative of my g. So that's 1 half x to the minus 1 half. And this is all over our g squared, x to the 1 half minus 1 squared. So this is the answer that we want. Don't simplify this long process. You don't need to do that. So let's look at another one. So this one, instead of it re being written in terms of function notation, it's just y equals, but same idea. My numerator, that's going to be my f. My denominator, that's going to be my g. OK, so let's go ahead and write this out. So I have x to the minus 1 minus x to the minus 2. So that means my f prime of x is going to be negative x to the minus 2 plus 2x to the negative 3. Let's get our g. Our g of x is x plus x squared. So that means my g prime of x is 1 plus 2x. Now I'm ready to actually do my derivative. So my derivative, since I have y equals, I'm going to use the differential notation. So I'm going to have dy dx equals. Now I'm just going to plug things in. OK, so let's draw a big fraction bar. So I have f prime. So I have negative x to the negative 2 plus 2x to the negative 3. And then I'm going to multiply that by my g. So that's x plus x squared. I'm going to subtract. Here I have my f. So that's x to the negative 1 minus x to the negative 2. And I'm going to multiply that times my derivative of my g. So that's 1 plus 2x. And then in the denominator, I have my g squared. So that's x plus x squared squared. And again, no need to simplify here. OK, so this one, we have um, a couple things going on. First of all, I've got some other terms. I've got a quotient here in this term. But then I've got x squared minus 3x. So for these terms here, I'm just going to be using the plain old power rule. But then for this one, I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. OK, so let's see if we can do this without writing out those f and g over off on the side. So h prime of x, I'm going to go term by term. So I have 2x, derivative of the 3x is minus 3, plus, and now I'm going to have a big set of parentheses here. OK, now um, I'll go ahead and use the colors like I have been to, to help you piece things out. That's my f. This is my g. 
Okay, so the derivative of f, that's 1, times g, that's x, minus 1, minus f, that's just plain x, times the derivative of g, the g derivative of g is 1, over our g squared. Okay, so this, um, we could simplify just a little, not too much work here. If it's too much work, I wouldn't do it. Okay, so my numerator, let's see, if I, if I distribute things, I would have x minus 1 minus x. So that ends up giving us 2x minus 3 plus, that's going to be negative 1 over x minus 1 squared. And again, I'm perfectly happy with that answer right there. Okay, so let's do one more quick example here. Okay, this one. Here, one, two things to notice. First of all, we have this notation, d dz. So if you remember, this means take the derivative. That's just a notation, it's an operator, and it means take the derivative. Okay, now, we actually don't need to use the quotient rule on this one because this one has just a product. Okay, so I'm going to um, let that z squared plus z be my f, and I'm going to let the 3z squared minus 1 be my g. And then one other little notation note here is I've got this vertical bar over on the right, and then I have z equals negative 1. So this means I'm supposed to evaluate at z equals negative 1. So once I find the derivative, I just need to plug it in, or plug in negative 1, and then I'm good. Okay, so I have to use the product rule. No other rules. So the derivative of f is 2z plus 1 times my g, 3z squared minus 1. I'm going to have plus. Now I have my f, z squared plus z, times the derivative of my g. So the derivative of my g is 6 z. Okay, now I have to evaluate that thing. So this whole thing, I'm not done yet, I have to evaluate it at z equals negative 1. So I have to go plug in negative 1 into all these spots. Okay, well, not too much work. Okay, here I have 2 times negative 1 plus 1. Here I have 3 times negative 1 squared minus 1. Here I have negative 1 squared plus negative 1. And here I have 6 times negative 1. Okay, I'm not going to, I didn't multiply this all out, I just went ahead and plugged everything in just like I had it. So this is negative 2 plus 1. Um, this is 3 times 1 minus 1. Um, this one is 1 plus negative 1 times negative 6. Okay, so this gives me negative 1 times 2, and then that's 0. So we end up with negative 2 as our answer. So the value of this derivative is negative 2. Now notice that we end up with a number here, not a function involving z, because we have that evaluated at bar at the end. So that's it for this video. Hope to see you in another one.